Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through three bestiaries for old school games that you can get right now. A couple of them are totally free. One of them is just a few bucks, and these things are awesome. Great bestiaries to use in your game. Now, the first one is the classic bestiary, which is a compendium of basic and advanced old school monsters. Now, when you get this file, you get it in this version with these stat blocks and also Nave stat blocks, but both are in the same um, file, or you get both files, and they're both free. The second one I'm going to be looking at is Ford's Fairies, which is a bestiary inspired by the works of Henry Justice Ford, who is an old school fairy tale, public domain now, artist. And this book is beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, the PDF is free. You can get a soft cover for a few dollars, but the PDF itself is free, or hardcover for that matter. And then finally, I'm going to be looking at Malevolent and Benign 2, a first edition bestiary. This is volume 2. I've looked at volume 1 in a previous monster manual kind of flip through. This is volume 2, and I think this is $10 in PDF, or if you want to get the soft or hardcover right now, you can get it in $20 either way. Now, there's a sale on Drive-Thru RPG. So I'll put links below to where you can get them all, but I'll flip through them and show you what they're like. The first one is only 27 pages, but it's in this two-page spread form. So it's more like, would that be over 50 pages? Um, well, I guess it's given in two-page spread form, so it's really only 27. But this is a really, really good, at-a-glance monster manual. You're not going to get a ton of extra stuff here. This is really kind of like, you know, bare minimum uh, running through old-school monster manuals. As you can see, the, the stat blocks are very small. They're given to you one after the other. Um, this is for use, right? This is not a book that you're, not, this is not a file that you're getting to kind of ponder through and read through and marvel at the beauty of. This is just, hey, basic stat blocks, boom, for lots and lots and lots and lots of old school creatures. Now, that's not to say, by the way, that there isn't great art. There is at times, as you can see here. I like a lot of this art, but it is definitely incidental rather than the focus. This is a book meant to be used. And I like that. I very much like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. These are old school, and the stat blocks are given in that old school way. Uh, you know, not a whole lot is given. Now, you can, again, take this in the Nave format, if you prefer the Nave format, or this more basic version of the stats. Either way, you're gonna get the same stat blocks in both of the books. They're identical in terms of the creatures involved and the art used. It's just the stat blocks are given in different forms. You get dragons here. Lots of different dragons, including Tiamat herself and Bahamut, Platinum Dragon. You know, in a way, this is kind of cheating because to get this for free means that you really don't ever need any other old school monster manuals again because this has basically everything that a lot of those, you know, other books, whether they be old school essentials or Dragon Slayer or, you know, the White Box, <laughs> any of these old school games, they're going to have the stat blocks given in their own form but they are totally different. Uh, I'm sorry, they're, they're, they're not totally different. They are identical mostly in terms of the creatures included. And these books all include that. Kobolds. I don't really have any art for the kobolds. I wish they did. That's a really interesting creature there. I think that's probably a lich, I would imagine, maybe. I'm actually not sure, but I think so. Uh, Jackal were, or were rat. It looks more like a were rat there. An acolyte, although that's not an acolyte, that looks like a knight. <laughs> but that's not the stat block given anywhere around there. Minotaurs, Pegasus, rock baboons, satyrs, giant skunks, a gino sphinx, sturges, a uh, vampire, also sea veteran. Man, that's interesting. Water weirds, zombies, and then one table for a, a random treasure that you can get based on you know, the kind of thing, maps and magic, gems, jewelry, thousands of platinum, thousands of gold, thousands of electrum, thousands of silver, thousands of copper, with some magic uh, random things on the side. But that's the only detail you get for this sort of stuff. And that's it, that's the whole monster manual. Fantastic little, almost reference, but no, you get the full stat block. You don't get any details about them except for maybe a sentence in some cases. Uh, no, you get a sentence about everything basically, right? Like the shark is a hungry sea predator or the shadow is an undead rot from darkness, or the shrew giant is oversized burrowing vermin. But mostly you just get the stats directly and clearly. 
the classic bestiary compendium. You get this. You don't really need any other monster manuals. Now, it's nice to have them, certainly, but you don't really need them. So, highly recommend this. Again, it's free, so you might as well go and download it right now. The second one is a very different kind of product. This is a much more... It's a, it's a bestiary, and it's, it's still to be used, but it is much more about the experience and the art and, uh, and the lore behind it, and just as you'll see, it's a beautiful book. I, I really, really like this a lot. Love that cover. Um, so yeah, bestiary inspired by the works of Henry Justice Ford and meant for most old-school role-playing games. Ah, this is really cool. Really cool. Oh, I love that. Ford's Fairies bestiary. With the contributors and a forward, and then the art as you go through. Now, a lot of these names I do not know how to pronounce, right? Aijo is one, probably. Uh, but some of them are much more <laughs> straightforward. This is a collective made up of six, up to six creatures, one speaking for the group. One creature is the de facto familiar and bestows on their adoptive companion a plus two bonus to one of their ability scores. Then you get the Arch of Snakes. <laughs> the Arch of Snakes, a petty god, or maybe some kind of minor chaos power. The Arch of Snakes appears as a writhing swarm of talking serpents. It can be encountered in the deepest of forests or other untamed wilderness, muttering about unfathomable con cosmic matters, a hissing cacophony of a hundred tongues and dialects. This is really cool. The Arch of Snakes has a unique power. It is connected to its past and future selves. Furthermore, it can allow an individual or group to pass into a different time, forming the threshold that gave it its, it its name. Beyond the Arch of Snakes is a realm of temporal madness that only the wild, strongest will can withstand. If they do, though, they emerge in an era of the Arch's choosing. This is awesome, 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 that sort of thing. Uh, the Silent Princess, or Azadem. Azadem are the progeny of unfertilized Gorgon eggs. They are distinguished from beautiful humans by having barely discernible shark-like scales. That's super cool. The Aurora Child. In the dead of winter, the children of the frozen taigas escape their kingdom of ice and darkness through the emerald gates that sometimes appear within Aurora Borealis. So the ideas here are come from folklore, come from fairy tale, you know, the black pig. Our creatures enchanted by certain wood witches to care for their hovels and cook for them. Right? So you have these great little flavorful creatures you can include in the game. Boarding Witch. The Boarding Witch is a shipwrecked survivor who became mad after losing her family. She follows ships on her bone-white skiff, boarding them for several nights in a row. Every time she asks for a new tribute, always something precious to someone. A unique item, a hidden jewel, a beloved pet, maybe a child. She always asks for something that is on board, even if no one knows about it. If the Boarding Witch cannot be satisfied, venomous snakes slip from her dress and spread panic while she literally devours the masts, the rudder, and the sails. That is so cool. Ugulnaz, the Dark Shepherd, is the son of an ancient hero and a forgotten goddess of death. Half guardian angel, half bogeyman. He wanders the countryside. Oh man, these are so cool. Cabinet of the Keeper. It's a help. The Cabinet Keeper uh, is a helpful ghost. It appears near a white wooden cabinet. Its doors are engraved with floral motifs and inscriptions in an ancient language that read, Here you are in your frantic flight past the Keeper. Through the doors you see delight. Trust the Keeper. The Cabinet of the Justicar. Justicier. Uh, Carcinos. Polite elfin society is named as Fey Pariah for the aspect it has taken on a massive crab. <laughs> Chambermaid. A type of fairy native to all manner of pots, jars, and assorted earthenware containers. The chambermaiden typically takes the form of a beautiful woman, a foot pall, wearing a gown of white, blue, or butterfly wing. The Chambery. Columba Siren. Dancer in the Dark. Daring children, fencer familiar, forest familiar, fire eater, fire naga, frozen king. That reminds me of, um, oh gosh, Adventure Time. The Garde Champetre, I don't I think that's how you say it. Giant Despair, Gourmet Griffin, <laughs> Headless Dwarves, Hermit Hag, Hydra Warlock. Man, so many cool ideas. The Island Cyclops. So cool. What think you, O oh mortal, of my fair and lovely wife? The Leech Lich. Hmm. So cool. The Bride and Lindorm. Lunar Giants, Locksmiths, Cherubs, hun Monster Hunting Hounds, Moon Headed Giant. You get the point. Multi Cerebral Ogres, not Goblins. These are really, really, really cool. I love these sorts of ideas. Very flavorful, with lots of um, 
like reading it is just an experience. It's almost like reading a fairy tale every time you open up the book. I love fairy tales. And, uh, and I think these are really, really, really great creatures, really great ideas. And again, the fact that this book is free, you can grab it, get a sense of these creatures, you can add some lore into your games, add some world building into your games, some fairy tale whimsy into your games. Man, this book is awesome. I highly recommend this one. And again, it's free, so you would be, I think, <laughs> very, very uh, foolish to not go pick it up right now. If you want to spend some money on a physical form, you certainly can. Just a few dollars. Malevolent and Benign 2 is really cool. Now, I've gone through the first one before, so this one is, is more of the same, but you'll know <laughs> when I say that, it's really good. Uh, more of the same, meaning really good. Because the first one's awesome. The first one had so many great, awesome creatures in here. So this is for the Advanced Adventures series um, for Osric. So the stat blocks are given in that uh, Osric's you know, form. Really cool stuff. You get a, a rundown of all the creatures in here. It's not hyperlinked, but that's okay. Um, doesn't have to be. Um, but you can just read through it, and it's quite fun. You get some things that are variations on things that we already know. So things like animated armor, right? Giant fungal ants. But then you get things like autumnal riders or avenging angels. Um, ban fates. Not only magic user and clerics that seek immortality via magic. Illusionists, even some druids do as well. That's what a ban fate is. Uh, barrow lords, sewer blobs, blue caps instead of red caps, right? Uh, book guardians, bolder kind, <laughs> broken ones. A whole bunch of new creatures for game. Creepy. Children of Coil. That's really creepy. Oh, Really, really horrifying to me. Ogre Bugbear Crossbreeds. Shrieker Shrambling Mound Crossbreeds. Snake Basilisk Crossbreeds. Cavern Crows. Ooh. Arachna Demons. Ooh. Ah! That's horrifying. Horrifying stuff in the demon section. Deformed Ones. <laughs> Ooh. The art in this book is great, as you can tell. <laughs> really good, really flavorful, really engaging. Um, and frequent. That's one of the things I really like about that. It's very frequent art. Dust weirds, dust centurions. A dust centurion is the departed spirit of a former warrior who perished at the hands of magic, unable to achieve the death in combat that it desired. This longing, combined with the magical energies from its death, transformed it into a spirit that animates the dust and wreckage left from the calamity forming into a humanoid shape when approached. Each Dust Centurion is compelled to issue a challenge to living beings that near it, demanding a one-on-one -on -one combat. A Dust Centurion is completely vulnerable to attacks from a combatant facing it in fair combat, but should its opponents attack it in violation of the duel, its vulnerability disappears, leaving it as a magical undead entity that can be harmed only by plus one or greater weapons. Should it be defeated fairly, it will leave its weapon behind, imbued with the magical power that departs from its now freed spirit, turning the weapon into a plus one piece of equipment. A Dust Centurion is unable to leave the place of its demise, though Dust Centurions can often claim entire battlefields or ruined cities as their lair. Legends tell of some entire legions who rise from the grave, only able to pass on when defeated by another force uh, of on the uh, force on the field of battle, trading their one-on-one -on -one challenges for ones on a more massive scale of battle. Fortunately, such legions will typically ignore any small group of travelers waiting for an entire army to battle against. Physical description, a Dust Centurion appears as a warrior made from swirling dust and sand, clad in a legionnaire's raiment, and wielding weapons appropriate to its past life. The precise material that a Dust Centurion is made of depends on the great calamity that it perished in. One that died in a massive magical blaze may be made of ash, whereas one that died of an unnatural blizzard could be made of floating crystals of ice. This material composition has no effect on its statistics. That is super cool, and you could build an entire campaign or, or uh, adventure around this idea. Maybe they go into a ruined city where this... Uh, that was, you know, under siege by these armies, and now they wander the fields around it. Whatever. Really cool idea. So, I think this whole book is full of ideas like that, essentially, right? A great ideas for creatures that... It's much more beyond the basic stat block, because, you know, stat blocks are not that hard to come up with, but the ideas behind some of these really good creatures, really valuable. And also, the, the value of throwing creatures at your party that they've never experienced before is immense. Because, you know, one of, the, one of the great fun things we experience as players when we first start off is like, what is that? What is this? And then as you play, right, that, that fades. Because you know the creatures. Which is why it's always so important never to name the thing that you're fighting, right? Describe it. 
and, and talk about it in terms of description rather than using names from stat blocks and things like that or rename them for your world. That's what I always try to do. But even leaving that aside, once players figure it out, oh, this is just a ghoul. Oh, this is just a hobgoblin. Oh, this is just a beholder. Once they figure it out, then they know kind of what they're dealing with. So having a, a monster manual full of new things, uh, variations on things, new things that are entirely new, players have no idea what they're facing. That's super valuable. So this book is full of them. Full of these creatures. Tons and tons. Oh, and I love that piece. <laughs> Little grappling goblins taking on these knights. And yeah, the art also is so flavorful and so inspiring. Um, I'm absolutely drawn to the art in this book. Yeah. Great stuff. Great, great stuff. Ooh, that's a great serpent man there. Shadow weirds. Sword ags. Crystalline spiders. Squat grunks. Squid heads. <laughs> Just fantastic stuff. I love this book so much. Wasp. Wendigos. Worm furnace. Furnace worms. Writhes. Worms. Crystalline worms, enslaving worms, Kurgan worms, Typhon worms, equivalent to a lesser god. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That's such a cool piece of art. I think if you get the hardcover version, this is the piece on the front, or the softcover version, I think it's on the front. Thus ends this tome. But there's an appendix, or several appendices of additional material. The Creeping Peril, which is a fungus that takes over someone's body. And monster by level, monsters by rarity, monsters by terrain type. Very useful in the end of this book. A beautiful piece of art there. And then your open gaming license. And then the cover. Yeah, the front and back covers of this book. Really great stuff. So I think Malevolent Benign 2 is an excellent tome. You guys should pick it up at the earliest possibility. But all three of these are excellent. As I said before, this is $10, I think, in PDF, or you can get the physical form either in soft cover or hard cover right now for 20 bucks. The other two are free in their PDF form. I think the Ford's Fairies has a physical form for a few dollars. So highly recommend all three. They're all very different, right? This is Malevolent and Benign 2 is much more about expanding your monster manual with useful monsters in a, in a much more traditional way, right? Um, Ford's Fairies is like a folklore book where you're dealing with fairy tale creatures and these folklore creatures that are going to be not necessarily things you're going to fight necessarily, monsters to, to, to fight, but ideas to put into your world, creatures and monsters to put into your world that are going to fill it out, flesh it out, make it feel much more uh, deep and rich. And then the Beastiary, the OSR Beastiary, is like a very incredibly useful reference document, a compendium. You just get this, you have it open, you just can quickly flip to what you need to flip to, and you have basic stats for it right there. No fluff, no, no, no bloat, just simple, straightforward. So all three, highly recommend. Uh, and I'll put links below to where you can get them. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope this has been an interesting video, and I'll see you guys in another one.